everyone, and welcome back to Maya's Reviews, a book podcast and blog where I review all types of novels. I'm Maya, and thank you for joining me today to talk about a book. So before I get started, and before, well, I guess you already know what book I'm reviewing since uh, you clicked on the episode, but before I falsely reveal, I guess, um, the book that I'll be reviewing today, I do want to talk about my schedule a little bit. As many of you may know, I, at this point, am planning on doing one review and one episode per week. As far as I'm concerned right now, both of those reviews, uh, whether they're blog or podcast form, uh, will most likely be the same book. But next week, I'm kind of getting back into the schedule of having to read a book a week uh, because... For the past few weeks, I already had all of my reviews set. I had already, because I knew I was going to be busy this month. So I had already gotten a bunch of reviews done, so I didn't really have to worry about it. But now I'm getting back into the habit of I actually, starting next week, I have to actually read a book a week uh, if I want to stick to the schedule. So we will see how that goes. Um... I'm definitely going to try my best to get one review and one episode out per week, but at this point, no promises. We'll see how it goes, uh, because I'm finally, like I said, getting back into the rhythm of actually reading the book and reviewing it the same week. So we'll see. If I can get ahead and get a bunch done for a couple weeks, um, maybe we'll be set, but I have no idea at this point. But besides that, I don't think there's any other announcements that I have except for Taylor's version of Wildest Dreams dropped and I literally stayed up listening to it um over and over for a couple hours so so that was fun besides that I don't think I have any announcements so today I will be talking about At the End of Everything by Marie Knickham which if you don't know, earlier this week, I reviewed This Is a, This Is Where It Ends by Mar- Marie Nikamp. So, this is kind of uh, their novel appreciation week. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if appreciation is the right word. But, well, definitely, today might be a shorter review because... Um, as I'll get into, I did not finish this novel. I read until 55% on my Kindle app on my phone, and then I could not continue reading. Um, I was stuck there. Honestly, this book is why I'm behind on, uh, reviews. Um, so, (laughs) we'll get into that. But today, I will be reviewing At the End of, or no, yeah, At the End of Everything by Marie Knickamp. It always has end in the title. (laughs) Thank you to Sourcebooks Fire and NetGalley for providing me with an arc of this novel in exchange for an honest review. There is a content warning. Death, disease, guns, and violence are all in this novel. And just so you know, I am unable to provide a full list of content warnings since I did not finish reading this novel. So if by the end of this review, if you want to pre-order at the end of everything, just make sure you educate yourself on the all of the trigger and content warnings before reading because I cannot offer a full list. Overall, I rated at the end of everything two out of five stars. The plot, characters, and memorability were all 1 out of 5, the setting was 2 out of 5, and the writing was 4 out of 5 stars. While I wish I could say that this novel lived up to my expectations, I unfortunately cannot. Just like this is where it ends, the novel falls short on its diversity, plot, and realness. I ended up not finishing the novel after being stuck at 55% for a long time. At the End of Everything is set to be published on January 25th, 2022 by Sourcebooks Fire 
and it is 320 pages long. At the end of everything is a young adult science fiction suspense contemporary LGBTQ novel. The book's description from Goodreads from the number one New York Times best-selling author of This Is Where It Ends comes another heartbreaking, emotional, and timely page turner that will keep you on the edge of your seat. The Hope Juvenile Treatment Center is ironically named. No one has hope for the delinquent teens who have been exiled there. The world barely acknowledges that they exist. Then the guards at Hope start acting strange, and one day they don't show up. But when the teens band together to make a break from the facility, they encounter soldiers outside the gates. There is a rapidly spreading infectious disease outside, and no one can leave their houses or travel without a permit, which means that they're all stuck at hope. And this time, no one, no one is watching out for them at all. As supplies quickly dwindle, <laughs> As supplies quickly dwindle and a deadly plague tears through their ranks, the group has to decide whom among them they can trust and figure out how they can survive in a world that has never wanted them in the first place. The novel is split between the point of views of three characters, Logan, Grace, and Emerson, and the split point of views seems to be a theme of Nikamp's novels, uh, which I personally really like split point of views if they're used well, especially in romance novels, they're really nice, but I don't know how I feel about the split point of views in a suspense novel. Logan is the sister of Leah, and both of them are living at Hope Juvenile Treatment Center, a place for troubled teens. Emerson is a non-binary teen also at the center, and Grace, I honestly forget who she is as a character. And this was a major issue with the novel. Most, if not all, of the characters were flat, unrealistic, and tokenized, and so are their relationships. If This Is Where It Ends was performative, At the End of Everything was even more so. The first chapter is pretty much dedicated to going through all of the characters at Hope and naming off their gender, sexuality, and race, which, don't get me wrong, Diversity is amazing, and I love to see authentic diversity in my novels that I read, except while there was diversity in this novel, it wasn't authentic, it didn't feel real, and it felt almost forced. Like, the author was trying to check off a huge list of what they needed to include. And during the first chapter... I could already tell that the characters would be sloppily represented, and this seems to be a really big issue that I have had with both of the novels of Nick Amps that I've read, is sloppy representation. You know, you have representation there, but you might as well not have it at all, because it, it honestly ruins the novel for me if an author is trying so hard to include people and yet not actually putting in the time and effort to make the characters relatable and realistic. Um, but besides the, uh, the characters' identities, I didn't relate to or become attached to any of them. They were all flat and unrealistic, and it made it really hard to sympathize with them in their hardships. And with a book full of hardships and a book that is quote-unquote supposed to be heartbreaking, uh, I didn't feel any of that. It was, I just, re I was just reading. I didn't see anything in my mind, which that happens with every novel I read, but I didn't feel anything for the characters and that really made it hard to read because I just didn't care. Interested in starting a podcast? I bet you haven't heard of Anchor, an app and site that makes it super easy to create your own. Not only is it free, but Anchor also allows you to make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Anchor distributes your podcast for you to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more platforms. Anchor has creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone and computer. It's everything you need all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's A-N-C-H-O-R.fm to get started today. And 
like I said, the novel is split between three point of views, Grace, Emerson, and Logan, and the writing is descriptive but kind of basic. Personally, I think this is where it ends. The writing was better and it had more of an air of suspense where this one, there wasn't really any suspense that I could feel. Obviously, it's a really hard situation that the characters are going through, but like I said, with the mixture of pretty basic writing and then unrealistic and unrelatable characters, I just didn't really care about what was happening in the novel. This book takes place in a world where a mutation of the Black Plague, and yes, like, the Black Plague from, I don't know when, <laughs> I don't know history, don't ask me, uh, the Black Plague, <laughs> and it's ravaging the world, it's a mutation, and it seems as if this situation was meant to reflect but be a more dramatized version of our world today in the pandemic, which... I think what Nikamp is going for with their novels is to make relatable novels that reflect our worlds but are also different so that we can kind of escape. But I really, really think that to pull something off like that, you have to have characters that are relatable and that people can see themselves in. And I really think with the sloppy representation, uh, that issue is what really really ruins it for me and which is that's really upsetting but it's it's a huge part because honestly I could overlook not you know not having representation you don't have to name off all the characters you know you could have characters that are closeted I don't know but when you're going through and specifically naming off characters and saying this person is non-binary, this person's gender fluid, this person's lesbian, this person's bi, this, this person's pan, this person's asexual. Um, you know, you, when you do that, you kind of have to live up to it and make it authentic. Otherwise, it's just lazy and sloppy. And I think that is a really, really big issue with uh, both of the novels that I've read by this author. The setting was decent but it really left me unsatisfied and not thrilled which for a suspense novel there was hardly any tension any suspense which is what you're supposed to have in a suspense novel uh which also this could stem from the fact that I'm tired of COVID like I am tired of the pandemic and uh, I don't know but I really really think that the characters the characters are one of the main driving forces of a story without characters what do you have and so the, with such lazy characters it makes the rest of the novel seem really poorly written if that makes sense um, but like I said uh, all the characters the, at least, all the main characters are troubled teenagers who have been sent to Hope Juvenile Treatment Center, a place that, not surprisingly, is not really treatment-oriented. Finally, the plot. After an unusual day at Hope, the guards abandon the kids without a mention of why. The kids then escape, which they didn't really escape because there was no one there to escape from, but that's besides the point. And they come in contact with a pretty much blockade at the entrance of the nearest town, which prevents them from truly escaping their prison, essentially. And through this encounter, uh, they one of them gets shot because the character, whose name I forget, runs forward to try and get past, because, which is kind of dumb because they all had guns, uh, but he does, and he dies. And uh, then they come back, and all of a sudden, they're getting sick uh, with the Black Plague mutation. And so the plague begins to infect those within hope, and the kids must band together to take care of one, of no of one another and live and, you know, grow food, help each other, uh, make makeshift masks, all this stuff. And they really try, but like I said, I couldn't really care because the characters were just so unrealistic um and I cannot speak for the second half of the novel as I did not 
I DNF'd it at 55%. But for me, the first half of the novel was slow moving, not compelling, and chaotic. Which, when you have something chaotic, it's not supposed to be slow moving. But I don't know how this book accomplished it, but it did. Uh, it Like, there was so much going on, but it felt as if the story just dragged on. Like, each... I think this stems from the... Uh, split point of view too is that you have multiple different characters who come from different places and different situations and so they're all thinking different things they all have their own issues going on and then there's the big main issue of the black plague mutation obviously but then it's very slow moving in each of the chapters even though there's so many different things that each character is going through, if that makes sense. I don't know. But it was, it was really, the story just really seemed pointless for me. Which, I don't know, maybe if I had finished the novel, I wouldn't feel that way. But I was stuck at 55% for a long time. And I usually do not DNF books. I hate doing it because, you know, I have read novels where the first half was really crappy and then the second half I loved and then and then I ended up loving the second novel so much more. So I try my hardest not to DNF, but also I could not get the, get past this novel. I really really could not. Um so I don't know. I I definitely wouldn't not recommend this novel, but personally, I did not enjoy it, and uh, I'm only giving it two stars because I can see how it has promise, but it just was not for me. I mean, with the with the lazy diversity, chaotic yet slow storylines and flat characters, I just couldn't continue reading because I have other books to read too. I'm not gonna spend my time uh, reading a novel that I don't enjoy. Uh, so yeah. I personally did not like this novel. I definitely think This Is Where It Ends was better. There were a lot of issues with it, but at least there were aspects that I liked with this novel. I really can't say the same. This is a little bit shorter of a review, but uh, I think that's where I'm going to end it. And that is my review of At the End of Everything by Marie Knietkamp. Um, sorry if I sounded very monotone today. I have a headache and, uh, I woke up a few hours ago. So, and I'm recording this at like 1pm. So, it's, it's a interesting day. It's one of those days where you really can't get anything done. Even though you have a lot to do. And then you just feel even more disappointed in yourself because you can't get anything done. It's one of those days. <laughs> and it's hot outside, so that makes it even worse. Um... <laughs> But I hope you enjoyed this review, and if you did, please check out my blog, Maya's Reviews at mayagreviews.wordpress.com. You can also find me at Maya the Bookworm on Twitter, Goodreads, TikTok, BookBub, and Book Sirens. I'm also on Tumblr at Maya Reviews. If you want me to review your book or want to come on the podcast to discuss a novel, maybe even just reach out to me, you can email me at mayagbookreviews at gmail.com. I do ask that if you are reaching out in, in regards to a review request, interview, collab, or anything publicity related, that you check out my publicity request page on my blog first and then email me. Thank you so much for listening and happy reading!